Welcome to Fry Wall Fridays. I am super jazzed to have my dear friend and brilliant home cook, Brandon Saltz, with me in the kitchen today. And he's gonna introduce me to a device that's really hot today, and I know very little about, the Instapot. Brandon, what are we gonna make today? Yeah, you're, uh, we'll be making some braised beef short ribs. They'll be braised in uh, uh, crushed tomatoes and beef broth with a little red wine, and uh, classic aromatics. It'll be delicious. Awesome, let's get going. All right. Uh, we have here uh, six beef short ribs. It should be enough for about six people. We have some aromatics. We'll have an onion. We have uh, one of the, we've got six cloves of garlic. We have some garden fresh herbs here, some thyme and parsley. Um, we have some red wine for deglazing, some beef broth, and for the braising liquid, primarily, uh, we have these crushed tomatoes. That looks brilliant. So Brandon, what do we need to do with the short ribs to start? Uh, well, the first thing we need to do is we need to season these, season these generously with some salt and pepper. And I'll start with some kosher salt here. Uh, and uh, for, this, for this amount of meat, we're going to wind up using uh, probably several teaspoons. And I want to make sure I, I season on all sides. And it can sit like this for a couple of minutes? It season. can sit like, you could, if you wanted to, season it hours in advance. Uh, and uh, all it'll do is make it better. Great. You can also do it five minutes ahead of time. It'll still be delicious. So we have the short rib seasoned. What do we do next? Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to prepare the, uh, the garlic and the onions uh, for the saute, which will follow the browning of the meat. Well, uh, I'm going to begin by searing the meat. I want to make sure I sear it on all sides. I will start with a pretty hot pan and I'll add uh, a couple of tablespoons of oil and, uh, and I'll make sure I don't crowd the pan also to get the best sear on each side of the meat. Let it sit for maybe three minutes per side, rotate it, uh, and remove when it's done. And when there's, uh, when there's space in the pan, I'll add the other meat as, as needed. The meat's ready to come out when it has a nice golden brown sear on, uh, on each side. And uh, when it's attained that level, I'll take it out, I'll put the meat on a separate plate, and, uh, and then we're ready to move on to the next step. When, uh, once all the meat has been removed, I'll turn the heat off, let the pan cool, pour off the excess fat. We won't need that anymore. Return the pan to the stove. I can put the fry wall back in the pan. Uh, and uh, add the aromatics, the garlic, the onion, the, uh, the bundles of thyme. Throw in a little salt to help reduce the moisture and sweat that out. Just let it cook on the pan over low heat for a while. Let the moisture come out. Let the onion and garlic become translucent and soft. Uh, then I'll add about two cups of red wine, turn the heat up to high, and deglaze the pan. Allow the wine to reduce to somewhere between a quarter and a third of a cup but you can really reduce it all the way down to a syrup if you like, uh, as long as you don't let the pan get dry. At that point, you can add beef stock, stir it together, bring the flavors together, add the chopped parsley, and you're done. All right, Brandon, we got our ribs, we got our reduction, we got our tomatoes, what do we do now? All right, well, basically all these things have to be combined and cooked at this point. So we're gonna start by adding the reduction to the instant pot over here. That smells amazing. I think we're gonna like it. You know, the advantage of doing this in, uh, uh, in the pan with the fry wall and then using the instant pot is uh, we gain greater flexibility that way. We can get the searing done a little faster. Uh, and uh, uh, and then we can use the instant pot to its greatest advantage. So you got the reduction, you're going to put one can of the tomatoes in. That's right, I'll add some of the tomatoes. Um, I'll mix that up so it's well stirred. Uh, and then I can put the meat in and top it off with right. a little bit more sauce. Yes, I see you using crushed tomatoes. Yeah, it's nice for the sauce to have some texture. You can use crushed tomatoes, you can use whole tomatoes for this as well. And nestle the meat in here. It's good if the meat isn't fully submerged, though if it is, there's no harm done. And we'll top off with a bit more sauce. And 
imagine you need this lid now. And now we need the lid. We need to we need to lock this up and get this ready for pressure cooking. Uh, Forty-five minutes of pressure cooking should be about right to give us some really tender tender meat. So this is a manual setting on the instant pot, and we'll just uh, we'll set the time for forty-five minutes. And uh, yeah, here the great thing about this is that it'll bring itself up to temperature, up to pressure. It'll cook and it'll turn itself off automatically when it's done. Great. While that's going, I'll mix it to Sounds good. Great. If you listen closely, you can hear that the contents of the pot have come to a boil as it, uh, as it builds up sufficient steam pressure inside for the pressure cooking to begin. All right, Brandon. So it's been going for 45 minutes. It's depressurized. It smells amazing in here. Let's get this plated. Let's eat. Let's do it. I'm starving. All right, here we go. I'll take that. Okay, careful. The metal will be hot. All right, well, first thing, we got to pull the bones out of here. And uh, there will probably be a few more bones sitting around the bottom of the pot. I don't need to grab them just yet. What we do need to do at this point, though, is, is spoon off some of the fat. And some fat from the meat will have collected on top, so we'll just use a just a regular kitchen spoon for that. Yeah, short ribs do have a lot of tallow in them. They do. It's part well, partly why we love them so much. Yeah, yeah, I think we're pretty good. Great. So I made some polenta for you with uh, nice cream polenta with cheese, but I imagine you could also serve this with uh, noodles or with rice or with mashed potatoes. That that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Polenta. Polenta or um, uh, pasta would be kind of a classic, classic serving for this. Do you want a ladle for that as well? Uh, I can use this spoon right here. That'll be great. Wow. So we'll just set a piece of meat on there. And some sauce. Oh my goodness, that looks beautiful. And I'm going to finish it with a sprinkling of parsley. And some Maldon sea salt flakes. That is one of the most beautiful things to ever emerge from my kitchen. Brandon, thank you so much for this amazing dish and this incredible introduction to the Instapot. Bon appetit. Thank you.